Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper and welcome back to my channel. Are you a wallpaper hanger or are you just starting out? Have you considered what tools you might need or what you might want to use as a vehicle in which to store the products and the tools that you need to do your job? Well, I've done a a couple of these videos about what I carry to the job and what I carry in my truck in videos past. But now I think I have everything that I need. So let me show you the staple things that I have that I take to every job. It doesn't mean that what I'm going to show you is everything I have because there are some things such as scaffolds, a two level scaffold that I don't want to bring to every job because it's heavy and it takes up a lot of space in the truck. So let me start by showing you what's in my truck. Now, if you look, I have recently acquired a breakaway truck. Now, as I take you around the truck, why would I want a breakaway truck? What do you think the advantage would be by having access to your tools like this? I can tell you one advantage, and that is that you don't have to climb into this when you need something. So let me start by showing you what's on the outside. Your basic wallpaper job involves a bucket of glue, an applicator, either a pasting machine or a roller, and some tools that you would carry in a pouch. So let's start. The order necessarily of what I'm going to need for a particular job, it's just starting from the back of the truck going up to the front. So, Orange spray paint. This is for your expensive tools that sometimes walk on certain jobs, like paint poles. And I spray them in a conspicuous area on the tools so that when you see the guy walking off of the job with your unique mark of orange neon spray paint, you can use the tool to um, so that when you see somebody else in possession of your tool on a job by this very unique paint, you can stop them and say, hey, that's mine. This is a Dremel and I don't use this for wallpaper, but the last time I used it was to cut a plywood. The last time I used it was to cut plywood for my wallpaper table that I made. It's, it's just a small circular saw that you can hold in one hand. Let me show it to you. It's a nice small tool. Okay. These... This I used to perforate wallpaper when I'm removing it. I got that in the floor section at the local box store. These are hammers. I gave this to my son once and he gave it back. Um, other hammers, just you, you run into things when you're working on walls, people ask you to put things up. Okay staple gun you might be dealing with some heavy material that you might want to just tack up on the wall if you're working alone and put a staple or two through it now over the years I've gone through pouches some of them were too big too heavy and you have your basic stuff in there right your knives pencil color pencils level Speed square, screwdriver, 
screwdrivers, etc. But going up and down a ladder with this thing kind of gets heavy. And this is the same thing. This pouch. I like this one because it sets up right on the floor. It doesn't tip over. And it has a base. It's just sitting on a buckle here. Okay. Uh, same things. Some screwdrivers. I have all the unique stuff that you would uh, purchase at your local paint store to get your paint work done and your wallpaper work. And for those of you who paint and hang wallpaper, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, you're measuring commercial work. You don't want to be walking around with a tape measure for 50 feet long walls. And so I have here a measuring device that goes along on the floor. I left the tag on it. This is from Lufkin. It's a great tool. Okay, I have a circular sander. My laser level came in that box. I keep it here. Um, various other things. Look, I have rechargeable batteries and the thing that recharges it. This laser level draws a lot of power and I'm tired of running out of energy. So I have two of these and I bring them to the job for when I'm using this. Okay. Here I have a drill. You always need a drill on, the, on a job. You may have to put a bed back together for somebody or a television bracket back up on the wall, whatever. Okay, moving right along is the next grouping of tools that are primarily for painting. Okay. Okay, I have 18 inch rollers here. I have thick rollers because I do some painting on outsides of houses. I don't wanna get stuck not having the tool then spending an hour in the store on the job. Multiple uh, holders for these, for these long wide rollers. Many replacements for them. Okay. And I buy fine stuff, okay. Uh, obviously it's a sheepskin okay uh, the better the tool that you use the better the job lambskin not a cheap tool okay I recently did a video on avoiding lap marks in the UK they call them different right uh, this avoids that okay Dan Childs my friend up in Michigan told me Spencer get yourself a lambskin so Dan I got it Okay, I'm gonna try these rollers out, pre-wet. I always pre-wet my rollers, but um, I'm always looking for the best finish. Okay, so, bunch of rollers. We call these sleeves. These things are the handles, okay? A bunch of brushes, Wooster Pro. One of my YouTube friends told me, hey, get yourself a Wooster Pro. So I used it, I agree very fine stuff so when you when you organize your truck you want to keep it in some sort of order that you can you don't want to be fighting with your your tools as you're at a, at a job down here i keep other painting things you know if i ever have to do a sheetrock repair I keep some pieces of sheetrock. I have small rollers. I have very small rollers. Okay, painting grids. Again, just your, your average tool that you need for paint stuff. Okay? And uh, like I said, you keep it orderly so that you know where your stuff is. And you know, if you don't frequently take a look at your stuff, you don't know what you have. Of course, um, I have my four foot level here. Now I have two, I keep one on each side. 
sometimes I'm at a job, you can't enter your truck on one side. I don't have the time to waste, I have two. One on this side and one on the other side of the truck. Moving right along, this is my chemical slash cleaning section. You get glue on somebody's window. You always want to have glass cleaner, okay? Ammonia, so it's the same thing. Okay, wall texture. You want to do spot priming. You don't have the time to set up with a tray and a roller. You just go like this. Tss, tss, tss. Because sometimes you have to patch the walls that you're working on. Tons of plastic. Don't save money on masking. You want tons of plastic so that you can cover your customer's couches. If you're working in a room and there's a couch within four feet of that wall, you should cover it. It just gives peace of mind to the customer. They'll love you. Always have this in your truck. Always. Okay, denatured alcohol if you wear glasses. Clean your glasses with this. This will get paint off of the floor, etc. Tough stuff. This is my go-to cleaner for just about everything. Inside your truck, customer's carpet, whatever. All right. I buy these cans. I just, I don't like cleaning out paint cans, so I bought these. And this is where I store my, my pre-made uh, wallpaper primer that I put on people's walls. Remember, I use my own homemade wallpaper primer. And it's three parts of this product with one part of water and I put it in my cans and I just store it here. Painter's plastic, what else we got? We got vinegar. For those of you who hang grass cloth, you'll know that you get a white cloth, you dab a little of this on the white cloth and then you can dab it on grass cloth and it will remove dirt. Try it in an inconspicuous area. Try it out before you do that, folks. Okay. I've done videos on this before. Paint deglosser. You're painting something. You want to take the shine off of it instead of creating dust and scratching it up. This will erode the surface so that you don't have to sand it. You know what I'm talking about. So you want to paint over something shiny. You use a deglosser and you're good to go. Paint extender. This product, along with this product, is it the same thing? Yes. It gives, it conditions your latex paint and it makes, it takes out the brush strokes and it makes itself level. Excellent product. And I've done a video on that. Just uh, YouTube Spencer Colgan, eliminate brush strokes. And you'll see that I featured this in my video. Okay. Acetone. You can get sticky stuff off of tile floors, especially wallpaper glue. You need to cover the floors. If you do get glue or wallpaper on the floor, this is your go-to product. You can get it up off of the floor. Okay, I think that covers everything from this section. Frog tape. This you can use on delicate surfaces, even wallpaper, when you want to paint a ceiling. You might want to use frog tape up against the wallpaper and then you can paint your ceiling and avoid getting paint on your wallpaper or whatever other sensitive surface you may have and it pulls right off. Okay, I use this tape as well. This tape will expand uh, when paint hits it and it will stop bleeding from paint going underneath the tape. I have tons of one inch tape there, the beige that you see there for my hand maskers. Okay, when you're moving somebody's bed or dresser, you want something to put under the legs of the furniture so you don't scratch the floor. Masking paper to use with a hand masker. These microfiber cleaning cloths are excellent to clean off graphics. If you have shiny wallpaper, particularly dark colored wallpaper, blue, black. If you use a microfiber, you don't get streak marks and swirl marks on your wall covering. Use those and it'll clean it right up. Another cleaning product, it's $1.50. 
this is a magic worker. Okay. What else do we have in here? Okay. Liquid masking. This is something that you you put on glass. You can spray it on, and then you can paint up against it. You can get paint on it. You peel this off. It's literally like tearing uh, a balloon off of glass. It's like a decal. It protects all of these surfaces that you see here. And you just peel it off. I featured a video using this. Just please look at Spencer Colgan YouTube, liquid masking, and you'll see how that works. It comes in gallon cans. It comes in spray can. Isn't that awesome? Goof off, another product you might use if you're using glue uh, on tile floors, comes right up. Okay, now we come to the not so often used section. Okay, we have caulking. You need your caulking. Okay, you go on a commercial job, it's required by OSHA to have a hard hat. You wanna keep this. You don't wanna to get to a job and the guy says, I thought you know it was a, it was a, uh, you needed a, a, this is a hard hat. You want to use these for certain commercial jobs when required. Okay. Wash and wax. You can use this for certain wallpapers, believe it or not. You want to make it nice and shiny. Or your truck. Liquid nails. Very good product when you're dealing with commercial vinyl repairs. Put a little of this under the seam, call it a day. Okay. Sanding sponges. You want to be able to sand when necessary. Paper tigers, I don't recommend them. They are a waste of money. They're the things that you rub on wallpaper to get it off and it perforates your wallpaper. They're good for about 10 minutes and then the friction from swirling around breaks off all of the particles on the on the tool and it's not usable can't have enough of these smoothers i recommend that if you scratch them by dropping them or you cut against them with your knife you use sandpaper to smooth it off so that you can use it again do not use scratched up smoothers on wallpaper you will scratch the paper Okay, moving right along. This is a multi-tool. Um, don't use that often. Uh, gloves, these are paint buckets that you keep handy. Okay, you're getting some hard to remove wallpaper. Go right to this tool, okay? So you can make some progress on the job. This is uh, one of those last resort tools. You just start scraping right up against the wall, particularly with plaster and lath walls, okay? You use this on sheetrock, you're gonna go right through the paper on the sheetrock. Okay. This tool I just got a couple of days ago. I did a painting job. Um, it gets into fine areas to sand them. Not crazy about it. That might be going back. This hand masker, uh, I have three of them on this truck, one in another vehicle. Okay, this is an important tool. This helps you mask quickly, okay? You see that uh, nine inch masking roll? I have multiple rolls of that. This is a heat gun, so is this. Uh, leave your extension cord with the tool because you don't wanna keep your tools separate and then, oh, where's my extension? Keep it with the tool. On these jobs, you want to get in and out as quickly as possible. So you see that my my uh, extension cord is wrapped around the tool uh, that it's used with. Okay. So what else do we have in here? Okay, that's wax for my... Um, my, I need while I'm driving my rosary beads, um, car deodorant. Okay, hand sanitizer. You grab something to eat. 
uh, you want that hand sanitizer. Holy water. Okay. Ear protection. I keep things that protect my body up here because you don't want these things with a bunch of tools. You want these things clean, right? So I got that up here. Uh, notepads to write with, right? My phone chargers. How many of you leave phone chargers at a job? This is a way to organize so that you keep it close and handy. I cannot emphasize sufficiently having uh, headlamps. I have one on right now. What you're looking at is the light on my head. It's one of these. But do not get the DeWalt like I did here. I got the DeWalt because they didn't, they were out of the Craftsman. The DeWalt does not, it's not as versatile as the Craftsman and it, it's not as bright. So I do not recommend this tool that I'm holding. The vehicle, phone chargers, you know you need them. Um, if you're driving a lot and you have, get one of these. Right now they are featuring them in, I think I got this in Lowe's in the USA. Um, but if you can't find them, it's, it's a phone holder. You know, you don't want to be holding that phone when you're driving. So I highly recommend that thing. Okay. This is my skim coat section. Okay. Sanding discs for my circular sander. Very good tool here. You got a bucket of compound. You want to clean off these tools, these metal tools. Get yourself one of these. You don't want to be cleaning off this tool and cut your fingers without having one of these. Okay. Why would I have this with my plaster? After you do a skim coat, take a little of this chalk line, blue chalk, add it to the mixture of your joint compound when you're going to go around and tool your work. What I mean by that is when you're going to fill in the little imperfections where you've done your skim coat, and this will show you where you might have to sand. So it'll differentiate itself by being the repair by being blue. Okay. Mud pan, plaster work. These are all my plaster knives. This will save you from getting tendonitis in your arm, your favorite arm. Okay, it's a smaller one. It's only 10 inches as opposed to my 14 inch pool trowel, right? Okay. I got a huge hawk here and I had my friend cut me a smaller one. Why would I want a small one and a big one? Well, when you get a helper, give him the big one so he can bear the weight of all that mud and you use the little one. <laughs> Actually, when my arm gets tired, I just go to the little one. As you can see, it was, it was cut square. Okay, as opposed to this one, which is factory cut, it's rounded. Okay, um, can't have enough cleaning brushes, okay? For the, this comes in very handy. Uh, I will confess I was doing a paint job on spindles uh, yesterday and I, I could not find my brush that I was looking for because it wasn't in the area that it was supposed to be in, okay? So I went out and I got these, okay? But they are not as sturdy as my good cleaning brush. Okay, you're mixing mud. You want to have a paddle, at least one. Uh, to mix your mud. I also have this one. This is my, this is my go-to paddle, okay? You want to be using something like this. All right. Um, this is a new tool I've acquired recently. They're knockdown sponges, okay? Let me show you them. Instead of setting up a compressor, I will put mud on the ceiling or wherever the wall and use these tools to apply the compound and then produce a knockdown effect. I haven't used it yet, but I'm told by my friend Paul Peck, who's a contractor, you can look him up on YouTube, that that's the tool you want to go to when you're doing 
uh, knock down. See this? This is a mason's uh, tool. It's actually called green foam float. They use this to to do stucco work when they're you know they can't sand their work. This is the equivalent of sanding for a mason, but it's also a great tool to resurrect your drying mud if you, if you want to tool it. The customer says, "Hey, I don't want dust in this house." Take this, go over your mud like this. You'll you'll awaken the top layer of joint compound, and then you just tool it off with something like this. Okay, it beats sanding. Okay, lots of these to do your sanding if you're so inclined. And just lots of uh, applicators. Okay, this is wood filler, powder form. This is my wood filler otherwise. Okay, now look, you wanna save your wood filler, put it in a plastic bag, okay? And then put it back in this thing. This will last a long time in your truck as opposed to not putting it in a bag. Okay, I got uh, joint tape for your sheetrock, fiberglass mesh, and this is another tool to mix uh, joint compound if you're going to be making like a knockdown texture. This will suffice right here. Or you can mix a five-gallon drum of paint. In this section, right next to the one we just covered, I have my drop cloths. Okay, let's talk about drop cloths. You go into a $2 million house. Uh, fortunately for me, the average house that I work in exceeds a million dollars. But you go into one of those million, $2 million homes. Please believe what I'm saying. You better have brand new draft cloths, okay? See this? You walk into a house. You'll notice something. If the man has to go to work, he stays there before he leaves and he watches you. He's watching what you bring into his house. This happens a lot to me, so I know what I'm talking about. Put down nice fresh drop cloths, make sure your ladder's cleaned off, that it doesn't have any debris on the steps or on the bottoms of the legs of the ladder. And uh, this is what people are looking for. You have to have your clean go-to drop cloths. You go into a, a beautiful home, you pop out drop cloths out of plastic, I'm telling you, the first thing they're going to offer you is coffee or something. All right, so drop cloths, drop cloths, drop cloths. You're on their grass. You're mixing mud. Put that on the grass, okay? Get a lot of them. Just put it under your uh, the mess, and uh, when you're making a mud mess, don't worry about it. You're all good. It's on your blue drop cloth. Look at this. This is a, a wall that you can make if you're painting in somebody's house. You want to contain dust, etc. Just look it up on Google, Amazon. I got it in the box store, but you can get it on Amazon. I keep it with my, my drop cloths. I know it's in there, okay? So, electric. Sometimes you're working on jobs and the only electric source you have is 60 feet away from the work area. I have 500 feet of electric, okay? That's a, that's a hose, a garden hose. I rolled it up on a hose reel so that I can, I can open it up easily and close it up again. You wanna be cleaning off your tools outside? You're gonna to wanna to have one of these, okay? Get a couple of them because they get lost. Do I have a couple of them? Yeah because sometimes you forget to bring them home from the job and other times they just get damaged. Okay, another electric cord with, with outlets in that thing. It's a great thing. You just roll it up when you're done. See, it's brand new, right? I just got this thing. But, you know, you wanna be, you wanna have all your tools, you know, spend the money. The first two years you have your business, you're gonna be spending a lot of the, your profits back in the business, but look at what you bring to the job, brand new, good tools. You don't have some 100-year-old raggedy extension cord. I have, I have new stuff that, you know, when you go to a job, people see this, and that's, that's why you get to, you know, you, you come with a nice truck, 
that's fairly new, always clean, and new stuff. You're not playing games. People know you mean business. And what does it mean to your price? Your price is going to be higher than the average Joe who shows up in a jalopy uh, with, with a vehicle he cannot even park on the person's driveway because he says, ma'am, sir, my, my vehicle leaks. I need to park it in the street. If that's you, you can expect to make 30% less than I make on a particular job, believe it or not. Perception is everything, really. Okay, lighting. Lighting, lighting, lighting. We are now, uh, after dusk, making this video, as you know. And you cannot have enough lighting, okay? So I have three years worth of accumulated lights. This is a great light, LED, $89, okay? I can't tell you how many jobs I work on where they don't have lights. And if, if the GC sees that you don't have lights, forget about it. Forget about it. He, if, if somebody offers you light on a job, they are worried about you. They're worried about... They're losing confidence in you. Trust me when I tell you. And I know I'm not talking to you pros out there. You already know that. I know you know it. I'm talking to the people who are just starting out when I talk about that. Okay, you need lights, okay? You need to be equipped on the job. So you have a helper on the job, you have your light, you give him a light. Don't expect your helpers to have anything. And then, of course, I got this light. This is my newest addition to my light collection. And I'll just show it to you. Okay. I open my light up. It's a tripod. Now you come into a job. You got one tripod for you. You got one for Johnny, your helper. Now you break out with this $350 light. Okay? You start lighting up the whole street with this thing. Okay? The GC is going to be very happy, or the homeowner. Believe me, when they say, do you need lights? Do you have enough light? What they're saying is, can you see my work sufficiently so you can do a good job? Don't let people ask you if you have enough light okay look at that thing we're in the pitch dark out here and i'm lighting up the whole driveway with this light okay let me put it on it has three levels let me do it again okay that's the lowest it's off one two three okay that's a milwaukee great tool um, it also has when the battery dies. I have another one. Uh, the batteries were $150. Uh, it also has if you, you both batteries die, you can plug in your extension cord into this area down here. And you don't have to use that. Torches. Okay, why would you want a torch on a wallpaper job? Um, I've gotten away from the use of torches. But... When you have commercial vinyl and you want to make it nice and soft and pliable, go up and down with your torch or just use a heat gun. But the heat gun, you need um, extension cords and uh, it might cause a hazard on the job. Okay, you're in another uh, home. Okay, you don't want to walk into a $2 million condo like I did and you, you have drop cloths that are nice and clean, but you have a beautiful unique carpet on the on the floor and it's a persian carpet it's very low pile here you go go spend 35 dollars and get this put it on the carpet you don't want to be this is like tape it sticks to the carpet i say low pile you don't want to be pulling somebody's carpet apart i don't think it's that sticky but it's a great tool have it available okay remember i told you on the other side of the truck i had my four foot level i got one here i got one there Okay, sometimes you can't access the truck or it's just too too much problem. You got a car behind you, a car in front of you. I have one four foot level on one side and one on the other. I don't play games. Time is so important on these jobs. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I went into the store and I asked for a yardstick. They said, we don't have yardsticks. Okay, so it's a four foot tool. This is an edger. I use this to double cut my wallpaper. I have one on this side and I have one on the other side of the vehicle as well. Boom. Um, small cleanup jobs. I have one here. I have one inside the truck. I have one on the other side. You always want to have something with which you can clean somebody's floor. Okay. And again, they're so light. They're so inexpensive. I keep them on uh, different parts of the truck because you need them and you don't want to be without one. Here's my other battery for the um, for this light here. Oh no, this one right here. So we keep that. Now, well, look at this. I recently acquired a couple of these. You're working in a bathroom. You don't want to bring that heavy duty light. This thing is heavy. Okay. So you say, you know what? I'm going to bring this one. Okay. What's good about this is. Look. You clamp it to the workspace, right? And you can just work. It clamps. Okay? You can never have enough light. Uh, people will love you for it. Okay? They're, everybody's watching you and what you have. People were so impressed. I had my laser level out. I heard the woman say, hey, he's got this laser, you know? And, um, I mean, they're necessary tools, but they're looking. They're seeing what you got. Okay, deal with wallpaper. You want to have some paint that fills in the colors on the wallpaper. Sometimes you need it. Okay, I keep these handy. Yellow, blue, all the main colors. Yellow, blue, red, black, green, orange, right? And sometimes you got to mix the colors and you have to have artist brushes. Okay, that concludes the lighting section of the truck. Last thing in the lighting section, I only keep it in here because it's long and tubular, uh, is... It's sort of like a drop cloth, but it's it's construction paper. It's paper that you, you put down on the floor. You have to have tape to tape it down. Okay? I have several rolls of this stuff, okay? And so I wanted to show you this section. Okay? You hang in paper, you need chip brushes. You want to put, sometimes you got to paste the wall. You want to be able to put wallpaper glue up in the corners, up at the top of a 10-foot wall. Bring this with you. If, uh, if you forget to clean it out, you just toss it in the garbage. It's a dollar. Okay. Um, you're doing peel and stick, right? So you have an eraser. It's an applicator. It's, you're not going to use a smoother on peel and stick, mostly. This is a smoother. Sometimes this is just too rough on peel and stick. So you want to use this. It's nice and soft. Okay, screwdriver that has all the attachments to it, right? Uh, I just recently made this from a jelly jar. Uh, if you're up on a ladder and you have this, which fits right into your ladder, you see that little slit I made in it? So, you know, if you, if you have need for your utility knife or your... Your wallpaper knife you just put this in here and you break it and voila all of your dangerous debris blades go right to the bottom of this jar you don't want these on the floor okay it's a big no-no on the job uh, you could do a great job people are going to remember my daughter stepped on the blade good thing she didn't she didn't get cut but they're going to remember there was a blade on the floor because you didn't have something with which to contain your broken blades always have a sanding thing there's always something on a wall you want to get off okay these are needles uh, you will inject glue into your commercial vinyl with this thing okay we keep it nice and safely contained in this this is my roller uh, i'll use this for cork i use it for stiff wallpaper not soft wallpaper you will make track marks all over it and you'll regret having used it but this is a great way to go quickly and apply on grass cloth so long as you clean it always 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 clean off the rollers always okay i this tool if i manufactured this it would have a pouch that it comes in so that nothing nicks these rollers these are like rollerblade rollers okay they're neoprene i think 
or hard plastic, whatever. Okay, so, okay, great tool to have on a job. Always somebody needs you to put something back up or you're taking off, um, you're taking off switch plate covers. Wanna put them back on. Okay, you gotta have something. Okay, it, it's, it's automatic. Pretty good tool. I think it's 20 bucks. Craftsman. All right. Um, what else do I have in here? Smoothers. When you're on a ladder, bring up a lot of smoothers. They drop to the floor. And then coming down off that ladder is a lot of time. Multiple blades. Okay, that's what I keep on my ladder when I'm up in the air. Is that? You will deal with natural products. Variations of grass cloth. A lot of times their string or string wall covering, it hangs. You don't want to tear it off. I put a little of this on a Q-tip like object and I glue the hanging material right to the wallpaper in corners where it's not going to come off again. This is glue. Hairspray is glue. And I use it to on top of my wallpaper products, the natural ones like grass cloth in particular. Um, you will see that some of the natural stuff just hangs and it, it doesn't look nice. So I just glue it according to the to the um, marks on the wall covering, whether they be vertical or horizontal. Can't have enough pencils. You'll see I have another syringe in there. Um, I want to show you what's in these cylindrical uh, containers. I have five-minute mud here. Okay. Five-minute mud, you want to know where it is. Sometimes you need mud quickly something that's fast drying i keep it right here right right with my everyday tool okay and i want to know where my five minute mud is now let's let's see what i got in here i think you'll find it interesting what i keep in this wd-40 you're working with tools and stuff hinges on doors you want to keep something that lubricates okay before I get into my cylindrical containers, I got rags here, right? Chip brushes. You see this? Look at these clean rags. I haven't even used them yet, okay? Why do I want nice terry cloth rags with me? You want to be able to dry your hands while you're on that ladder. There are times where you cannot hang wallpaper because the wallpaper is slippery. And you need something to throw over your shoulder that's big enough to stay on your shoulder, something with which you can dry your hands from the water and the glue that's on your hands so that you can manipulate your wallpaper. So you need towels. And so I have towels. You don't want to be wiping wallpaper with a colored towel. That color will come off and go right into your seams of your white wallpaper. But you do want to have it so that you can hang effectively. Water bottles, water bottles, water bottles, water bottles. Can't have enough of them. Okay, let's see what I got in this cylindrical container. Okay, first of all, I want you to take notice of the fine artist brushes that I have. Okay, you have a Schumacher wallpaper and you need to put a little blue on it. Let me tell you something. You want a precision brush that gets right around, brings that paint right to the circle. Let's say you have a circle in a clown's hand. You're dealing with a Schumacher. You go out and you get your satin paint or flat, whatever the sheen on the wallpaper is. You want to hit that circle, right? You just want to go in. See how it's pointy there? You stay within the circle. Okay? You don't want cheap brushes. P color pencils. Color pencils. Color pencils. How do they work? You, you put water on this, this color comes right off, okay? Shall we try it? Let's get some water. Let me show you how this works. Okay. So this is a color pencil. A lot of people don't know that they start writing on the, writing on the wallpaper with this. No, you dip it in water. Watch this. See how the color comes off? Okay, and it's precision. You put the color right where you need it. Dip it in again. Bring the color right to the point at which you need it. 
right there. Okay? You do not do this. It's not even gonna give you color. You wind up scratching the paper, okay? So, got nice, look at these, look at this brush. I don't play around. I get the right stuff. They're um, artist brushes from, oh, I was just gonna order more yesterday. Forget the name of the the, uh, the artist brushes. But you see these, these are, these are cheap. These are garbage. You see that, you see that edge there? You don't wanna be applying paint on $2,000 wallpaper with this piece of garbage. This is junk. Okay, color pencils, can't have enough of them, and they should be sharp, okay? Look, look at how nice that is. That's like a pretty three inch. You go in, in there, you're getting right up against it. You, you, you mar the color in a corner, you get right up there in that corner, just like this, look at that. Okay, that's what you wanna have. Don't play games with your tools. You get to a corner on the wall, Hey, I can't get in there. There's a bump on there. You get right in there with this. This is what women use to file their nails, right? You go right up in that corner, watch. Let me show you. Look at that. You can get in that corner. You can't get in there with a sanding sponge. So you get yourself a nail filer. You get whatever you need to get in this, into that corner. Okay, and I have multiple ones. Okay. Um, that's it. That's what I keep in there. I can't emphasize sufficiently the importance of getting good artist brushes. You want to put that paint right on a dot. You take it like this with this pointy brush. You go right on that dot like this with your paint. Okay. This is another cylindrical tool holder. I got this at a thrift store. Um, but I think you can get them in uh, Bed Bath & Beyond to hold things like uh, toothbrushes when you go away, or a place where you would buy something to contain pasta. Okay, again, can't emphasize enough. When you're hanging paper, you engage in artistry a bit. And uh, I wanna show you my favorite brushes. My favorites. And they're my favorites because of the precision. Look at that. Look at that. Dip it in the paint. If you if you're if you're if you have to do a large area, you want to get a larger brush like what I'm holding. And it gives you precision application. Okay. Or if you want to make your wallpaper is missing, the color came off, you might want to dab that in there, then dab it on a dry cloth, come back to the wallpaper and just create an impression on the wallpaper similar to the one that's already on it, but that's now missing because the color came off when you wiped it down with your sponge. It happens. Uh, a lot of stuff from China gives up its color and, you know, people, they either believe you or they don't. They think you took that color off, but uh, when you get a lot of experience hanging paper, you just tell the people, I, I anticipate this color, uh, you don't want to kill them with bad news, but you do want to let them know. I anticipate that this color may give itself up in some places, such as in corners, etc. You just let them know so that when it happens, you're not the bad guy. They actually, oh, I see, you know, I told that to a woman recently and uh, she said, oh, what do I have to do? Go out and get a little paintbrush? I said, no, I do that. But she was very happy to hear it in the beginning. So... This is, this is where I keep my chargers, okay? My lights, you'll see them on the inside of the truck. I keep all my lighting where my lighting is, this way. This is the other side where I was showing you my long lights. These are the lights that you can attach to things, right? Remember, we said if you're working in a tight area, you can attach the light to a shelf or even a door, right? Just like that. And now we have ourselves light, right? So I keep them all together. And these are where my charging stations are for my tools. Like if you do a paint job outside, you wanna have a non-gasoline uh, blower. A lot of times GCs are now bringing these 
tools on work sites because there's a lot of dust. And, you know, they want to blow the dust away from where they sit down all day. And so I got one <clears throat> myself to blow it off. When they blow their dust onto my wallpaper table, I blow it back with that. Because obviously you can't keep a gasoline tool inside, right? <clears throat> you hang wallpaper, you need a fan. This is a turbo fan. This blows a lot of air. It's $100. Okay. You want to dry your wall when you prime it quickly. You need that. Okay. I don't uh, really tape a, a lot of sheetrock, but when I do, I have, I just took this out of my truck and I put it in here because I didn't need that space. Caulking guns. Uh, unfortunately, if you use a caulking gun a lot, they get gunked up. You got to throw them away. I have several, as you can see, one, two, three. All right. Um, keep them in a bucket to keep them contained they fall on your hand it hurts okay so duct tape you want to keep your your drop cloth down commercial job you're working on a cement floor people trip right they trip on your your drop cloth now you have a lawsuit you minimize uh, hazards by using duct tape okay duct tape to keep your drop cloths down in place so people don't trip on them at least if you make an effort to avoid a hazard your you're, you'll be covered uh, more so than you would be had you just left uh, big buckles in your drop cloth where it was an obvious trip hazard. Everything's on video today. You want to be acting as safely as possible. Back of the truck, I have these <clears throat> compartments from which you can pull your painting poles, okay? Remember I said with the orange paint, you might want to uh, identify your tools Sometimes you can't get quickly enough. You can't go up and ask a guy if he's walking off the job with your tool. But you can certainly remember that you painted the body of your brand new painting stick with orange. You say, oh, that's mine. I love when they're walking off with your tool and they say, I know, I know. I was going to give it back to you. Yeah, but you're leaving. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just forgot I had it in my hand. Okay, give me my tool back. Okay. Uh, very important to mark your tools. Um, inside of the truck, you want to have minimally one ladder that is six foot. You're looking at a four foot ladder there. You're looking at a platform ladder that extends. Those legs open up, they extend. Platform ladders, those bench ladders, they are the best to hang wallpaper in a bathroom or on a wall. You, you put an A-frame ladder up, it gets in the way at the bottom. And you can't get close enough to the wall unless you go all the way up at the top of the ladder as your body draws close to the wall. But with the platform, you're standing on a bench and you're right up against the wall. That's the way to go right there. Um, so, generally, you're going to have three buckets in your truck. You see the lights? Remember I was telling you about the lights? You want the charger? It's on the other side of this area. These are clamps to keep my wallpaper down. Sometimes I, I do the wallpaper outside and the wind, you can have wind blowing your $300 parole grass cloth onto somebody's grass. They see it and you get in trouble. Clamp it down on the edges. Okay, remember I said I try different tools? They're garbage. They didn't work, but these do. Okay, $4.50 a roll. Um, you want to have small rolls of paper towels because sometimes, guys, you got to blow your nose on the job, right? So this is a small roll of paper towels, right? Okay, painting tray. I have a two-gallon painting tray. I have a small painting tray, depending. I don't paint a lot, but when I do, I have it handy. Dust masks. Got to have them, okay? That's one set. Then I have all of these, okay? Cooler. Uh, you want to keep yourself hydrated during the day. You got you to gotta stop at the store, get yourself some good drinks, keep it on the job. Um, people forget you're working in the house. You will get dehydrated. And if you do that over the course of time, your body suffers from a lack of hydration, and then your muscles are working without enough hydration, and it causes a lot of fatigue in the body. Joint compound. Got to have it. 
I, this is my joint compound right here. I took a joint compound bucket and put my glue in there. After I, uh, I sifted out the, the lumps of hardened glue. Again, have enough sponges. A wallpaper hanger uh, needs sponges. These are the best, the best. You're looking at the best sponges for wallpaper. The second absolute best are from the same company, right here. But this will take that moisture off of the off of the wall and bring it right toward the center of the sponge. This does it, but this does it the best. Spray bottles. Can't have enough spray bottles on the job, all right? You want to be able to move that wallpaper. You want a spray bottle with you on the ladder. It just has water in it, okay? Um, I always have a clean one on hand just to apply glue. Lots of smoothers in there. I fill this up with water, and then I have all of these smoothers and sponges ready to go. Okay. You're removing wallpaper. This is one of the best. Uh, you just pump this thing, and you get lots of water coming out of here. Painting grids. All right. Um, what else? We got two ladders there. Okay, what else we got in here? Vacuum. That's a very good vacuum for somebody's carpet. You just take that out and you vacuum off their rug. They love it. When they see you come out with a vacuum that's not an industrial one, they like it. Got to have gloves on the job when you're using certain chemicals. Can't have enough plastic. I store them in here. The ones that I use on the job are the ones I showed you outside on the uh, on the outside of the truck. Dowels, sometimes you might want to firm up a door hinge. You take some dowels, you chop them down to put in the hole so you uh, fortify the frame and the hinge. Tape, masking paper, Brillo, okay, again, spot primer. Okay, you're filling in walls oftentimes. You need you need these fillers. See those fillers there? Plastic wood. This is uh, Floetrol. Remember the the product that thins out and self levels your paint. I have them on the outside. I have them here too. A T square. Cutting cork wallpaper or grass cloth outside. You put that right on the table. You get a nice straight cut. These are all cleaning tools that I use. Color fans. People say, hey, show me, uh, I want to paint this wall blue. Pull that out, let them do it while you're doing your work. And this way, it's good business. You keep them engaged. You say, hey, I got, I got a color fan from Sherwin-Williams right here. And this way, they can look at the color and you get the job because you supply them with the color. Okay, clamps, can't have enough of those. Smoothers, smoothers, smoothers. I have a lot because they fall, they get scratched. I don't have time to be fixing them on the job. I put them away and I fix them when I have the time. Okay. You wanna have a mop, you're working in really fancy homes. See these mops? What color are they? White, they're clean. You don't wanna be taking a dirty mop into somebody's house paint thinner. Obviously, you know what that's for. Goo gone, you're cleaning up messes. Okay, look, I'm just going to tell you, you get into a bind, you run out of wallpaper primer, put a little of this with water, and you will literally seal porous surfaces. Okay? Yeah, someone's going to ask me something about it. I don't use this a lot, but this is border adhesive. You can also use this in corners, okay? Bring it in a cup, get a nice little paintbrush, and uh, you just brush it in corners, and it it hangs, it attaches vinyl to vinyl. See these things? I use them to erect plastic walls in people's houses. Here's one, here's the other. You just put them and you form a square, and you just hang plastic over them. I have a video on it. Just look at Spencer Colgan YouTube, how to paint a high gloss finish on a wall and you will see that we erected a nice uh, spray booth with these poles. 
Okay, when I do spray, I have to have a tool box with cleaners for my paint sprayer and the various heads that I use, the tips. You wanna have that all handy while you're working. Okay, you see this? Remember I told you about the platform ladder? These legs extend. You can extend this out, okay? See that? It says new 20 inch to 30 inch adjustable height. It's an excellent tool, okay? And we come back over to our other toolbox. Just any little common tools that you use on the job, okay? I do texture a lot for people, so I bought the tool that makes the texture. This is a bag of texture. You squeeze this bag and you blow this through your compressor. No need to get the hopper set up and clean out the hopper. This little bag that has this texture is your hopper. It's called Easy Pro Texture. Um, after having purchased it, I suggest that you just go and get it out of the can and spend the $18 on the can and charge accordingly. I don't recommend that you buy that thing. Okay, that is my, my, uh, the inside of my truck. My wallpaper table is over here. I cleaned it off. It's out here. This is just one of many wallpaper tables that I have. Okay. And this opens up like a picnic table. It's eight feet long. It serves its purpose, but you can't cut on it because it's plastic. And so that will be going back in the truck. And that's basically it. Now, I let me just explain I, when I said I have multiple wallpaper tables. I have two trestles that have an eight foot table of three pieces of wood. You put them on the trestles, it's very easy to carry back to the truck. You carry the two trestles, your helper carries the three boards, and uh, they interlock and they set up. It's in my tool shed. So I use that, but it is heavy, I will say. You see that in the middle of your screen? That is my painting toolkit. It has brushes. Every tool that you use for painting is in that Sherwin-Williams paint tool bag. Okay? Everything that you commonly use. The saw horses, sometimes you're dealing with 54-inch goods. You just want to get a piece of soft plywood, put it on the saw horses, clamp it down. I use these 2 by 4s they fit right into the saw horse, and you can you can just uh, work with your your product on a large table. So wallpaper hangers, they don't only have one table; they have multiple tables. So that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. That's uh, those are my go-to tools. What you saw here, it's not all inclusive. I uh, I don't carry everything because it it makes the uh, the truck impossible to maneuver around. I just want to show you one last thing. Right there is my texture applicator. If you look close, you'll see that it's a tool that's used to knock down texture, particularly knock down. Uh, you could use it with other textures too, but I use it for knock down and I keep it on the truck. Okay, that's it. I hope you like the video. If you have any questions, let me know the pros. I would like to know what staple tools that they have. If they watch this video, what do you have that I didn't show in this video? I want to know because uh, professionals recommend things to me and I usually get them. For example, Dan Childs recommended that I get a, uh, a tool that you see hotel hospitality workers using to push garbage bags, toiletries along on wheels. I got it on commercial jobs. I use it. I keep all my stuff there and I lock it up in a closet in a hotel if I'm working in a hotel or otherwise because it has everything and you don't have to keep track of all these tools that you bring to the job. It's all contained on your push cart. Thanks for watching the video. Please let me know what you have. Thank you. See you on the next video.